The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. All Scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Good day, everyone, especially our subscribers. Welcome once again to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Bidu Evangelistic Ministry. Okay. Without much ado, I presume you as a believer have uh, already used the principle of rebound of 1 John 1, 9. And for you unbeliever, use your God-given free will. Use the positive Paul of that volition of free will to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Acts 16, 31. Therefore, we are going to uh, take up today the uh, doctrine which is very important for all believers. The title is Suffering and God. Okay. Now, if God is love, how can he allow evil and suffering in this world? You might ask that question. Well, first of all, let's try to recall the doctrine that tells us about God's creation, namely the angels that he created and then mankind. That when God created them, everything was good and perfect. And get this. It was never God's intention that there would be evil and suffering and pain, sickness and disease and death in this or in his creation. You see, one of God's attributes is he is love. And he wants to show his love to us. He wants to share his love with his creation. And you know, true love always wants to be loved back. God wants to have fellowship with his creation. He wants his creation. He wants mankind. He wants the angels to in turn love him. Yes, he wants to love them. And in turn, they would love him. For true love, to exist, individuals have to have a free will. They have to have the ability to choose. One cannot force someone to love him or to love them. True love is always a voluntary action. So God put his creation here when we emphasize with man. He put man in the Garden of Eden, Gen uh, Genesis 3, God placed everything the first man and the first woman need in the garden. Their creation was absolutely perfect. No sickness, no suffering, no death, no sin, no rebellion. Everything was paradise. And listen, God gave them a choice, a free will. God said, Ish and Isha, Listen to this very important warning or a caveat from Latin, beware, warning, a modifying cautionary detail to be considered when evaluating, interpreting, or doing something. Of all the trees in the garden, you may eat any of them except this tree in the middle of the garden. Because, listen, Ish and Isha, on the day you will eat of it, you will surely die. That is spiritual death. In the original, dying you shall die. Now, shall die there means physical death. 
but dying means spiritual death. Now that was the test that God was giving them. God gave them the choices. God said to them, are you listening to me? Are you going to follow me? Are you going to let me be your God? Are you going to love me first as opposed to loving yourselves? You see, as we know in Genesis chapter 3, that the first man and first woman chose to rebel against God and to sin against God. Remember what God had told them? On the day you will eat the fruit of that forbidden tree, you're going to die. Because that would be an act of rebellion against God. Yes, that was actually what happened. Mankind rebelled against God. They wanted to go their own way. They chose their own thing. And that's what brought, listen, that was what brought sin, rebellion, sickness, pain, suffering, and death into this world. And listen, they didn't come into this world because God created them, because God wanted them. It was man's rebellion against God that brought those things into the world. Do you understand that? Now, there may be philosophical, illogical questions that would come up regarding this, like, couldn't God have foreseen all of this and could have avoided them and not ma made man, just simply not created man? If he knew all of the sufferings and all this turmoil and chaos in the world and eventually some people would wind up in hell, could he just avoided it? And the answer is yes. He could have avoided it. Yes. God knows everything. He is omniscient. He knows the past, the present, and the future. And he did foresee it. You see, we could not tell God what to do. That's his choice. He is perfect. But then, once again, we say it. Then if he knew it, then could he have avoided creating mankind? You see, if he did that, then God would not have had a creation to live with him for eternity, loving him and sharing his love forever in eternity. You know, we human beings do look at these things in our own human perspective. Yes, it sounds good when we say that. God could have avoided all the troubles, the sufferings, tribulations, and chaos to happen in this world had he just canceled his plan to create mankind who actually caused all these shambles, all these mess, havoc, confusion, and disarray. Now, we are going to continue in our study on this tomorrow. Father, we thank you for this opportunity of studying your word today. May God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us more on this. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.